levels oh. of poverty mm -hmm. because right now things are hard yeah. okay people are just going very crazy with the way things are going and we always find a way to seek um to find a solution to the problem of finance and money in general so today we're having a very important conversation yes and we have someone in the studio <laughs> yeah i think someone who is very prominent in his uh I, I, I'm going to say in his field. Let's just give him a round of applause first of all. <laughs> when he sent me his profile and I had sent him uh, a topic of discussion, and I told the profile, I said, no, it can't <laughs> be that we're doing this. It just cannot be. Well, uh, his name is Mr. Olauto Fawahini. And he's an enthusiastic and creative professional who's always ready to bring his A game to the fore. And um, with vast experience in media and marketing communications, right. and a plethora of skills, expertise in public relations, e commerce, media, hospitality, and the likes, this man excels at developing brand strategies, managing campaigns, and producing content. How amazing is that? So today <laughs> we're going to go into the the uh, public relations aspect of right. more because there are too many things to talk to you about, <laughs> right? I mean, and uh, today we're talking something very important, especially with business owners, right? And so, um, creative, cost effective, and strategic ways to mm. advertise your business, especially in these times, right? Mm. And, and, <sighs> and this is quite interesting because I know that there are a lot of online businesses, <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, with Instagram. There's a Facebook market, there's yeah. a TikTok market. Mm. But then my, also, my, my, my my biggest concern, because I know that somehow online people that learn strategies that go over time, because every time I, every time I go on my Instagram, I'm like, God, I beg. <laughs> beg and that everywhere. Even if I don't want it. Right. And yeah. algorithm helps. Yeah. You just have to talk about it, this AI thing, and right. you're seeing it on your social media. But somehow my concern tilts towards the offline market. Right. So let's start with offline market, yeah. you know, strategic marketing for them. Yeah. The people that haven't um, hacked the online way of marketing their business right. and they're still offline and struggling. What do you think? Let's let's just go through because we don't have time. Yeah. What is the best way for this offline businesses to strategically market their products. Right, thank you so much. Um, I feel good. Thank you for having me this evening. Um, so let's just let's just go straight to it. It's very important. I, I, I always say this, in fact, um, everywhere I go to, when I speak to young people about starting early or people who are just starting and they want to know how to scale, I always give them three, three um, bullets three mm -hmm. steps that you mm -hmm. have to take first off um i say start where you are mm. use what you have and do what you can mm. okay? start where you are start do what where you, you have are. and do what use you what you have mm. and do what you can i wish we had an acronym for that. <laughs> i know right <laughs> we'll create that in the show so um start where you are i think so i see a lot of people you, you just decided to um, start selling something. Um, you want to go into selling shoes. Nobody knows yet. You're just thinking about it. And the next thing I see a Facebook page with that name, mm. XYZ uh, Shoes. And then the f next day, one week after, you want to have 1,000 likes, comments. Mm. No, it doesn't work that way. Mm. So Facebook pages were not created for people who are just starting and mm. they, they are probably using monies that they get from their friends or family to buy the products mm -hmm. that you want to sell because you have to put money the algorithm will kill you you have to put money into it before people can see what you're selling or what right. you're putting right there mm -hmm. so i say start where you are first off look at your circle it's the it's the place to start and that's the truth when I started to write several years ago, I started with my family members. I would write one small article and give my sisters and my brother and say, can you please read this thing? Do you like it? It's interesting. Mm. If they say yes, I'll share it with my friends. If they say yes, I'll share it with you. I mean, it just mm. keeps going. So you have to start from your circle. Mm. So tell your friends first that you're selling shoes. All right? So let them buy. Mm. One person will buy. When that person buys, tell that person, please... Can you take a picture of it and put it on your status on WhatsApp and let your friends see it? Oh, this is nice. Where did you buy it? Oh, my friend sells it. Till today, the most effective uh, marketing strategy is still word of mouth. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Referrals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, referrals is mm-hmm. still the strongest. You can't. You, there's nothing you can do about it. So you, that's where you go back to. So if you cannot do all the paid adverts on Facebook and Instagram, please start where you are. Mm-hmm. Start with your circle of friends, circle of friends, your family members. If you're lucky if you have very supportive ones, mm. they will buy and they will help you to push. Um, use what you have. You have that WhatsApp status. You have that normal page for Facebook page, that normal Instagram page. Start with that. Post, take, use your phone to take a picture of the stuff, put it there. Today you get one like, tomorrow it becomes five, next it becomes ten, mm. and it goes on and on and on like that. Do what you can. When you are starting out, you are the only person, you are the accountant, you are the buyer, you are the seller, you are the, the content the, creator, you are, the photo, you are everything. Videographer, everything. Everything, videographer, photographer. It's fine. Take your time. Do one thing at a time yeah. and learn to, you know, don't rush. Don't don't want to sell 1,000 shoes in one week. It doesn't happen that way. You start with one, then to two, then to five, then to six, then ten, and it goes on and on like that. All right. All right. Um... And this also applied applied to people that have stores, offline stores. Yes, yes, ab- absolutely. So uh, it's always a thing of be be good at what you do. Trust me. Now, I've, I've said this before. How do people make money when there is a need and you are that person that comes to mind of the person that has a need? Then you're probably going to have make money that day. I'll give an example. I wake up in the morning at home and then my cup is bad. Mm. What do I do? I think of somebody to solve that problem, a plumber. Mm. I call him. You can be sure that that plumber will eat that day Mm. because he will solve my problem. There's a need. There's a need. So first of all, ask yourself what you're selling. What need are you meeting? People sell what they want to sell. You're not selling what is meeting needs. Mm. So people haven't eaten, you're selling shoes. I will eat first Mm. before I buy shoes. Okay. All right. So look around your circle, friends, family. What are their needs? Your colleagues, your church members, identify the needs first. Then tailor whatever solution you are going to offer to meet that need. Because any time they wake up in the morning and they have that need, they will think of you and then they will put a call through to you to say, oh, can you supply this? So, for example, if you're hungry, you call somebody to supply rice or chicken. Mm. That person will eat that day because he will sell and make profit. So he won't go hungry. So that's it. So when you're thinking of your products, think of the consumer first. Mm. Not what I like to sell or not what I really like. Mm. Even if it's what I like to do. (sighs) Then start by saying, how do I solve their problem? But do you think this is also applicable to those that offer services? Absolutely, yes. Everybody. Do you think it's a little harder for for those service service providers? Now, so if you if if uh, you know, so some a lot of people made the mistake um, starting out. So, for example, I I had I have a construction background. I studied construction surveying. I mean, mm. oh, oh, sorry, I mean we tell you that. Yes. Uh, so we both studied construction, um, construction surveying to be precise. But all along, I mean, look at the way, look look at the YB. Look at what he does now. Mm-hmm. He's he, he studied quantity surveying, yeah, but today he's so here. Media, yeah. He's in the media. Mm-hmm. I did too, but I, I mean, some people um, went to study what they really don't want to do, right? But when you're done, you can as well just drop it and go for what you want to do. Now, when you're picking up what you want to do, it's harder, like you said. However, you can tailor it. You know, these things evolve by the day. So there was a time when if you need a, if you need a dry cleaner, you would go and you see a man that will use his hands and wash, it's right? Yeah. But today you see dry cleaners that they probably are not even touching the clothes at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They are the middle men. Yes. They will go to you come to your house, collect it, take it to those that will wash it. Mm. And take responsibility, take responsibility. for what's your, your They clothes. charge you, they mm-hmm. pay those people, they have made their cut. Everybody's happy. Mm. So it you have to evolve. It's, it's, it's always a value chain. So you look at agriculture, there's a value chain. You look at media, there's a value chain. You look, everything has a value chain. Mm. Your, the question is, where do you plug yourself, right? Do you want to s- stay with packaging? You don't have to go to the farm. You don't have to touch the soil. Mm. But when they are done and they bring it, you are there to package and sell. 
do you want to do processing? I mean, you can think about anything. Okay, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's great. And it, it, it's given me a, a lot of insight. But then you were talking about a business or a need that a lot of people would make demands mm -hmm. for. And you talked about food, which, to be very honest, food in Lagos, selling food, I want to put it as simple as that, is one <laughs> business that... For some reason, it is selling. <laughs> the people are making money. Even in Kobe. He's in this Lagos. Mm. He's selling in Kobe. Yes. He became a thing in Kobe. In Kobe. And it has evolved over time. You see, people say, oh, I can just order like five liters of soup and right. my problems are solved. Yeah. Mm. You can even see ordering stock fish, dry yes. fish and all of that. Yes. But then there's a little problem with yeah. that. Now, a lot of people have seen that this is a niche that a lot of that, that people are ripping, mm -hmm. you know, is getting profit out of it yeah. and then it becomes saturated right. saturated market so saturation mm. is a problem that i see because i go on instagram i go on facebook and i'm saying food 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 there's some meals i even see i'm like what do you not say you may cook <laughs> 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 blending blending you know last week what do you not week? sell now they cook <laughs> over the weekend people are trying to people are trying to break out they want mm -hmm. to do something create so that mm -hmm. people can go to their page and yeah. see what they're doing and try right. to order meals and then there's saturation in the market right. how do you okay so it's simple. Yeah. A lot of us pick up what we want to do just by sleeping and waking up and I think, you know what? I know how to cook. Mm. Okay, maybe I just cook and just take it to church. I know that. My church members will buy after service. Mm. I know how to cook. Okay, I'll just go to my neighbors to buy. Oh, I'll take it to the office. You just feel it and then you come up with the idea and then you hit the road. We don't do research. Mm. We never ask questions. How many people start that soup business by first doing like going on their WhatsApp and doing like five questions? If you see somebody to make soup for you, would you buy? What kind of soup do you like the most? Um, how much would you be willing to pay for a bowl of soup? That's a questionnaire. You're doing research. You don't have to pay XYZ research company 10 million naira to mm. do research. That's research. A circle. You circle. circle. Ask them questions. Mm. What do you want? What do you need? If, I, if you get this, how much are you willing to give to it? Ask about 50 people. Put the, those, the answers together. Make, that will help you to make a good decision. So if you see everybody says, no, suit me, I can't cook, or I don't, I don't need your soup. So you know that that's a no-go area. Because even that your circle are not willing to, to buy what you're selling. So don't go there. So if you're trying to say that if your circle is not buying what you're selling... That's How will that tell us by But then we keep hearing things like your family and friends yeah. are not your target audience. They, they are the first target audience. Hmm. So hmm. if you have millions of naira to throw on Facebook advertising, hmm. brouhaha, I don't have a problem with that. Hmm. You don't need your family members. Tell them to go and, go and play. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> but if you don't, hmm. ah, if you're not good inside, you can't, make, you can't impress the person outside. Sure. So your circle is the, is the best way to start. So they're the ones that are going to vet yes. whether or not yes. that is going you, to if thrive. If you have the very, very objective and progressive ones, they will help you. My sister, when she studied English, when I was growing up, I would write, I would write, and then I would be mixing capital letter with small letter. You see this <laughs> knock on the head. I'm sure there's a hole in my head. She says that, she gives me a knock on the head. You know, you don't write like that. I didn't know I was going to be a content creator. I didn't know I was going to be a PR person. I didn't know I was going to be writing all my life. Mm -hmm. I've written two books. I'm working on the third one. Thanks mm -hmm. to those who saw me when I was writing, and they said that, guy, this is not how to write. This is how you write. And then they guided me all along. And they were my first audience. Mm -hmm. okay. Until really today, cool. they still read my stuff. They still watch my videos. They're still my best fans. All okay. right. So yeah. with with I just want to ask this quick question with right. businesses that have already thrived to a large extent. Sure. What do you think the role of influencers mm. talking about your business right. as a means of advertising mm -hmm. does to the business? Um. So our brand ambassadors. Mm. Yeah. Good. Um. Everything. Everything you do is good. Well, not all good. I mean. Everything has pros and cons, right? Mm -hmm. um, at the point when you have a brand ambassador and the person is loyal to you, which is not possible anyway, you're mm -hmm. fine, right? So, for example, there are some people that will always talk about my product. Whether they, they talk about other products, they will always say, I don't have to pay that. They are just your natural influencers. But then again, you see that the influencer marketing is a business on its own. So today, 
XYZ institution comes to you, they pay you to talk about that product, you do that. The following week, the direct competition of that person mm -hmm. comes to you, brings the same money, and you still talk about it. So there's no, there's not a 100% loyalty to a business right. by an influencer. Right, so... I mm. mean... Yeah, what you said just reminded me of something. There's this lady who is an influencer. I'm not going to mention her name. She was talking about the skincare product. And after like six months, she started talking about another skincare product. And I went in the comment section. And I said, I said, I know they use this one again. <laughs> <laughs> so now nice. it's this product that is good. Mm. And, and then she was trying to save face. She was trying to salvage the situation. Mm. But I could just see from the eye of someone who was like, girl, don't just do this. Because she was trying to say, well, so if I see something better, I will not go to it. And, you know, she was indirectly pulling down the other brand mm. and maybe they just had you know, a, a very a very would i say friendly breaking down yeah. yeah. you know what we can't be saying your six your contract that was six and, and ended, yeah. Yeah. it was a mutual understanding but on my she was pulling down the exactly. other business and exactly. it, did, it didn't really look good exactly. i mean I, it, it just actually reminds me of another influencer who was talking about msg uh, in uh seasonings yeah and she was saying no some of these plants in nigeria are bad you never should use them use natural mm. uh, herbs and spices yeah. A year and a half later, why am I seeing a brand? <laughs> because one is pushing her and she's talking about that's this. I'm like, it, that's it, that's you it. just literally bashed MSG and this it's, brand has it. it. So the thing with influencer marketing is, I think businesses are just leveraging their fan base. Mm. Right? That's it. So they just want, they just want us, I'm saying us, because I'm an influencer too. <laughs> <laughs> they just want us to talk about their brand so that our fan our uh, network can see and um, relate with the post, right? Mm. What that what businesses are looking for is not, I don't think, is loyalty. Because to be honest, influencers can be loyal to you. They're doing business. So, you're, so trying, you're trying to leverage on their network. Yeah, mm. that's it. So I know you've got 1 million, 2 million followers on Instagram. I want you to make that post so that that 1 million, 2 million people can see it. It's okay. not like I want you to stay with my brand. Because mm -hmm. I can't pay you for a year or for a lifetime to keep talking about my brand. No. So you talk about my brand, the two million people you have are saying it, that's fine, bye. You can talk next. about in that mm. next, on to the next one. So mm. that's how it is. So for people that own businesses that have actually thrived, what is the yeah. best form of marketing for them? So I say that um, you stay true to your, to your values, to your words, right? If you if you offer something, then offer it for good quality. Ensure that you're giving value to the customers for what they are getting. Okay. I tell you, so there's a particular phone brand. I'm not going to call it. Not less than ten people have bought this phone because of me. Because are you, so I'm very good with devices. They just call me and say, "So I'm at the store and I want to buy a phone. What should I buy?" I don't think I just call it. Mm. Why? Because as you have used it, people who have used it. My brother-in-law told me about a day, a day that he was on the fourth floor and the phone dropped face down mm. and the screen didn't scratch. Right. Mm. So, yeah, so a lot of people have used it and they, they see value in it. In fact, the people I told that but they are telling other people. Mm. So you're it. saying that if you give good value, value for your business, quality, it automatically will. referrals will happen. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. Okay, yes. and more people will come. More people will come. It might be slow, but it will come. Mm. And it's better you grow organically, right? Mm. Than just, yeah, right. yeah. So you can measure, you can, you can, you can, you can um, celebrate the, the growth as it happens. I prefer Should that. Give mm. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that again. I would prefer that I can trace my growth like this organically rather than just pump millions of naira to some superficial kind of methods. Mm. And then I get that... Um, a surge mm. one day and people just go, what are you doing there? And then the next day, they're just all, gone, right. all gone. All right. I mean, we're running up now. <laughs> yeah. but I just have 10 seconds to ask you this question. Right. If someone has 5 million euros to start up a business, mm -hmm. would you advise them to get a store or to start online? Um, if you have 5 million, please start online. Use your house as a store. Mm. Mm. Use your room first, one corner in your room. Start. So you always advise for people to start, yeah, start, start, home, start digitally, online, start online, then yeah. offline. Digital, yeah. Even so, if it's provision, anything, start, start, online. start online. Yeah. I because think, when you start online, you can you can get the two. You can catch people in your in your area, in your circle, and, mm -hmm. your circle, and then you can see people who are not there. 
Mm. But if you start in your house and you don't do digital, you only catch people in your circle. Mm-hmm. So, so you can use when you one start online, you can use one stone to kill two birds. Right. Please start online. As I mean, I, I feel like mind. this conversation should continue, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we have to go. No, Thank right. you so much, Mr. Alauto, for Thank having you. me. It's Thank been a you. great time having this conversation with you. And Thank I know you. that everyone listening to us right now, just talking things down, and they're getting acquainted with their businesses and making these great decisions. Right. Uh, courtesy. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for coming. So much. Thank the you news happens at six o'clock. Stick around for more right here on the One Family One Radio Station, Super Nice Two Point Seven FM.